and welcome to the Rich Tuesday. My name is Ruben. This is my spoiler talk ending for season three of Cobra Kai, which is now a Netflix original uh, series. Also, my favorite moments of season three. So the end of season three, we have that big fight that we're totally expecting. The three dojos are now fighting each other, although it does look like alliances are changing. Hawk has changed again because he, you know, he, we've been seeing, seeing him deal with moments like that. He, we, we kind of knew that he was on the edge and then he does finally step over. We see our main protagonists like Miguel having to over be overcome you know being able to walk again massive battle through his head and it has flashbacks like that which I really enjoyed from our kind of main protagonists from each dojo I thought that was really good and then so that whole fight sequences sequence is excellent but then we have the sensei fight and we see Chris, Johnny and Daniel all fight obviously Daniel and Johnny are fighting Chris and Chris uh, I felt a bit sorry for him because he's he's taken on two senseis so let me just say that once again it's an unfair fight but Chris has it coming <laughs> um, and so uh, we see Daniel use the move that he's now been taught you know Miyagi kept some stuff back which is great but we also see Kreese at the end of that calling for backup with the with the guy that he saved uh, in Vietnam um, said that you can call me up anytime um, I owe you life so he's obviously calling in that card season four is going to be about the competition so let's take it then they're going to uh, forfeit whoever loses will close down their dojos I think that's the bet that they've got going and so now we see Daniel and Johnny team up and I feel like season four is going to be really them butting heads trying to find ground of their fighting techniques of how to teach their students if they can find a balance it's going to be excellent i think that's what's going to be the first few episodes and then we can see uh, cobra kai with crease and his new found friend calling for help it'd be even worse i think that's what where it'll go i also don't think that we'll see elizabeth shoe back it was fantastic to see her in uh episode 9 and 10 i think it was just a nostalgia moment but it was definitely like it was the grounding force that helped our characters grow the most you kind of just put it into perspective that there weren't just two sides to the story there was that Johnny's side Daniel's side and the truth uh, which I thought was really good a nice way to go so one of my f favorite moments is a moment that goes throughout season three and that's Chris the sensei I mentioned in my original review that I just felt like he needed more fleshing out um, um, and they did such great justice by the flashbacks in Vietnam so you really understand the weight of this character you see how he had to fight his own men and his own uh, commander uh, eventually um, over the snake pit which is a, a great moment I thought it was excellent it harked back to some real death matches you know blood sport that kind of thing it wasn't fake which is why he is the way he is um, you understand the weight and the carrying of their responsibility but part of that shaping is that he lost the love of his life so he comes back to having been in Vietnam having his commander uh, say you're on your own every man for himself may the best man win and then he comes back to the, his loved one uh, his partner being dead and that all shapes him to being the sensei that he is now teaching his kids how to survive because he has that mentality and so that is my favorite moment although it's like lots of moments throughout the series but as a character that's been fleshed out when you see the flashbacks with him I really enjoyed that because it added so much more weight to the story uh, my other favorite moment is again another character moment but it was more at, I think it was episode five or six where Daniel goes to Japan and we see him return to, to what is now Miyagi-Do and we see him meet up with Chosen the guy that he fought uh, the bad guy it, essentially that he fought in Karate Kid 2 which was excellent can you break a log like that? don't know never been attacked by tree we see Kimiko again and Yuki. These are characters that I'd almost forgotten about because I haven't seen Karate Kid 2 for a while. Uh, but just seeing them again brought a nostalgia, but again added weight to the character of Daniel, which I think he was really needing because it was almost like Daniel knows everything and he's always in the right but he just felt like the weakest character. You know, Johnny's really interesting to watch. And so I feel like those moments with Daniel, especially that episode, added so much more to him, especially that really nice moment about him reading the letters um, from Miyagi. 
And so that whole episode was a, a, like just an episode that I thought just really added levels to Danielson because he understood that he didn't know everything um, and that this, the consequences of that fight wasn't just about him and what people had learned. And so he ends up saving his business because of putting good out into the world. But then also we see Daniel learning more. He's able to let go a bit of some stuff he's been carrying. Um, he, also, he also learns more in karate that it's not just defense, but if needs be, it can be for attack as well. If someone comes at you with a weapon, the pressure points reminded me a little bit of the three, the three ninjas, which I love. It's a, it's a bad film, but it's really fun. Shoot, Dad. Uh, yeah, so that was another fantastic moment. One of the other favorite moments is probably one that you're not expecting me to list here, and that is the music. The nostalgia for the 80s. It's not used a lot. There are key moments that it uses where the soundtrack is 80s and it comes in and it plays and it just adds so much. Um, knowing when to add a, an 80s score or soundtrack to something, especially with like Johnny Moments or Nostalgia Moments, I thought was fantastic. And when they used it, I was just like, yeah. I'm on board for that, that's so cool. Obviously seeing Elizabeth Shue, the girlfriend, um, I thought that was great. That was another great moment. I thought her character was great. When we are introduced to her character at the beginning um, and she's talking to her mom, I really felt like those lines, that dialogue was forced. It just felt awkward to me. I don't know why or what was off. I don't know, you can tell me in the comments below if you felt that there was just something weird about that moment. Probably, probably my only real negativity in the entire series was that moment. I just thought, wow, that's so weird. It just feels off. Uh, yeah, but the Elizabeth Shue moment, seeing those characters together on screen, that for me was, was very nostalgic and I loved that. Going back to Daniel, uh, when he's fighting Chosen and Cho Chosen is um, teaching him some new moves and he put, basically puts him in the same hold that you saw in Karate Kid, the death move where he's holding his hand out like that, he's holding his head back. And I was like, oh, that's the, that's, I see what you did there. And then he does the nose bit, he goes and he goes, ah. uh, that was great. One of my favorite moments in this season for sure. And then lastly, my last favorite moment in this is the fight scene at the end. Uh, not necessarily the sensei fight, although I thought that was good, but the kids, um, I say kids, they're, they're teens, young adults. <laughs> the young adult fight scenes where all three of the dojos are fighting each other in Daniel's house. Um, and for the most part, I thought there were excellent moves. You're seeing the kids really doing some flippy flippy stuff. Uh, you're seeing uh, interesting hand holds and throws, judo moves, a mix of martial arts. Uh, it was very interesting the way they had been put together. But really I'm celebrating the camera movements because it flows around the room, it follows um, really nice kind of steady cam moments where it follows across the glass and then um, you see it go into the hallway there's a very few cuts in it it just feels like you are one of the people in the fight I think that's probably what it was intended so you're going around you're really close you're watching this fight you're watching that fight there's a lot of fights going on in the background so you kind of you, your eye centers on one fight but then you see another two going on in the background and I can just imagine the rehearsal and the timing for that scene must have been incredibly hard to pull off and they did it well. I thought it was excellent. So where do you think season four is going to go? I do think it's going to be Johnny and Daniel trying to figure out how they can make their two ideas of what teaching kids is going to be, teaching young adults is going to be, seeing the two Jojos work together. <laughs> uh, we can see Kreese obviously bring his friend and uh, I feel like he's just gonna up the ante and obviously we're gonna see the competition this time around um, and there's gonna be some cheating going on. I feel like that's what's gonna happen and uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see whether we get another season. Um, I imagine it will do because it's really popular and uh, as long as there's some good writing and good storytelling to go, that will have more seasons. But I'd love to know your comments. What was your favorite moments? Who's your favorite character? And what do you think is gonna happen in season four? Thanks so much for watching this, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long Tuesday.